Hello everyone, I'm Zephyrin. Welcome back to the Mastering Mind Super Series. This is lesson 12 and lesson 5 of the intermediate level. And today we're going to be talking about the logic of maximums. Today's lesson will be concept-based instead of pattern-based like every other lesson pretty much. There's no better way to teach it than to go through some examples, so let's get into it. And by the way, we will be using screenshots. These are courtesy of mindsuper.online. I did not find these. Alright, so here we have this scenario right here. And we can assume that there would be more tiles down here and possibly over here. So we can't just assume that these two... Um, would be mines. So we are kind of left without any patterns here. So here is basically the gist of this concept. There is a lower number next to a higher number and we're gonna start with the lower number, take a specific region of tiles that this lower number sees and then use it with the higher number. So in this case what we're gonna do is take a look at this two and we're gonna say okay in these three tiles here one, two, and three. There is a maximum of two mines. There cannot be three. There is at most two mines. Now, if we take that information, we look at this three, it only sees this additional tile here. And since we know that these three tiles can only have at most two mines, we know that this other tile has to be a mine. So great, now we know that this tile must be a mine right here i'm from the logic we just derived but we can take this a step further so again we know that there's a maximum of two but we can actually get rid of the possibility of there either being zero or one mines within these because if there's zero then this three is not satisfied it's only touching one if these three are cleared if there was one mine it could be there could be there also doesn't work because this three is still dissatisfied it only sees two so now not only do we know that this tile is a mine but we know that there are exactly two mines within these three tiles so it could be any combo like that or that whatever but knowing that information we can clear these three since we know that the two would be satisfied from whatever um, two mines are in here. And then we can just continue playing the game uh, from there. So let's take a look at another similar example of this. Alright, so here we have a quite similar looking board, but with different numbers here. And you may immediately notice the 1, 2, 1 pattern in 2D, which is from a previous lesson. But we're going to take a look at this from another angle using this concept. So let's start with this one over here starting with the lower number that's a common theme you'll see we can say that there's a maximum of one mine within these three tiles as of now there could be zero there could be one but there cannot be more than one there cannot be two so using this info we take a look at this two it touches this other tile we know that there is at most one mine within these three that means that this tile has to be a mine since for every case in which there is one mine or less this two would need to see another mine and then again similar to what we did last time we can continue along this logic and we can figure out which possibility is correct is there either zero or one mine within these three turns out there can't be zero because this two would be left one mine short if all these are safe so we know that there must be one mine within these three tiles therefore we can be sure that these three are safe and just continue on from there alright so here we have another example a little different this time but I want to use this example to explain how you might go about spotting these types of patterns it's pretty difficult but one thing that I noticed is that oftentimes if you're stuck and you just don't see anything you can try this method by looking at a smaller number with a good amount of tiles around it and then a larger number with less tiles around it than that lower number and oftentimes that'll yield one of these cases for this example we're going to be taking a look at this two here the lower number we see that has all these tiles around it we're going to take a look at these three tiles specifically so of these three tiles we know that there can only be a maximum of two mines within them 
So now we shift our focus to this four. We look at the other tiles that it touches. So it touches all these three, which have a maximum of two, and also these two tiles. So we know that since these have a maximum of two, these two must also be mines um, for this four to be fulfilled in any case in which these three tiles contain two or less mines. So you can be sure of these two and just continue on from there. And yes, I know there's a 1-4 pattern, but there, there won't always be an underlying pattern that you can use to solve these. But in this case, similar to the previous two examples, we can actually continue with the logic, and we can prove that there must be two mines within these three cells, because if there are any less than two, if there's one mine, let's just say it's there, this 4 is not satisfied. And then obviously if there's zero, then even less satisfied. So then you could be sure that these three must be safe since we know that there must be two in here. All right, we have another case here. It looks a little similar to the last one, but you'll see what's different here. So we're gonna actually start with this one right here. We're gonna be using the one and the two as our little pair. So we're gonna start with the one and we're gonna take a look at these two squares, this and this, we're gonna say there's a maximum of one mine within those two. So now we shift to this two. We know there must be at most one mine within these two. Therefore, we can be sure that this tile must be a mine. And again, like all the other cases, we can be sure that there must be a mine within these two, since uh, these two not having a mine would leave this two dissatisfied. So we can be sure that these three must be safe, since this one sees a mine within these two. All right, so now we are on to the final pattern of this lesson, and it will also be the most complex. So when you see a situation like this, it can be confusing on where to start, but just remember the core concept from earlier that we're gonna be using lower numbers with more tiles around them and using concepts from that and figuring something out about higher numbers with less tiles. So in this example, you might be tempted to look at this one, two, but we see it only touches three tiles, the one, and the two touches four, but we want the opposite. So what we can actually do in this instance is use three numbers. We're going to be using this one and this one, which collectively see seven tiles, these seven. And we're going to be using something about these seven tiles to figure out something about this two. So let's start with this one up here. So it sees these four, and we want to find something about this two. So we're gonna say that within these two tiles, so this one and this one, there's a maximum of one mine. And we can see that both of these are also seen by the two. We can do a similar thing with this one now. So again, trying to figure out something about this two, let's say that within these two tiles, this one and this one, there is a maximum of one mine. So now you can see what we've done. There's a maximum of one mine within these two tiles um, thanks to this one, and there's a maximum of one mine within these two tiles thanks to this one. So now what we've done is surrounded all the tiles that this two sees in two sets of two tiles that both have a maximum of one. And now, similar to what we've done with all the previous patterns, we're going to convert these maximums into a specific number. So now what we can do, since this two only sees these four tiles, is we can accomplish this. We know this two has to see two mines. We know that both of these maximums must be capped. There must be one mine in here now, and there must be one mine in here, because if there wasn't, say there is zero in here, then all of a sudden we need two mines within this space which can only have a maximum of one and we can say the same thing about this one there can't be zero in here there also can't be zero in both so we know now that there must be a mine within both these sets and also similar to the previous examples we can use this knowledge of now what we know is a specific amount of mines which was previously a maximum to continue with the board. So now that we know that there must be a mine in here, that these two are safe, and this one, since there must be a mine in here, 
this tile must be safe. So I hope this gives you some idea as to the extent of logic of maximums, but the truth is that this is really just the beginning of this concept, and I do have a lesson way in advance for kind of this, this concept, but on steroids. It can get pretty crazy, but that's why I wanted to go over it now, because sometimes it will actually help you in games like in here, but I think it's important to get that seed planted um, just to prepare for more advanced things in the future. But I hope you all were fine with um, the use of images here because I know that it would have taken like forever to find these patterns naturally. Um, so you might see more of that in the future. Just let me know what you think of them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, feel free to rewind um, just to see all the logic in action. Um, again, these aren't patterns. These are con This is basically just a concept. Um, but yeah. Leave any questions you have in the comments, and until next time.